Hey, how's it going? This is Josh from Books by Josh, and I would like to welcome you to episode number 21 of the Books by Josh show. This week's episode is titled, Instant vs. Delayed Gratification. This episode is going back to my roots again, guys. <laughs> it's going to be more likely a rant, so you've been warned. So before I can start talking about instant gratification, let me define it for the five of you out there that don't know what it is. Going to Google, <laughs> To the first definition I found, instant gratification is defined as the desire to experience pleasure or fulfillment without delay or deferment. To sum up, in simpler terms, it's how we feel right after a purchase or activity. We buy something because we want it. That's basically it. Instant gratification sounds great, but it doesn't always last. Prime example would be with food. We all had a craving for something that wasn't good for us. It could be something sweet, something greasy, but after eating it, we regret it. It tastes great in the moment, but when you think back, you hate yourself for it. It's not only your food. It's something that you buy out of impulse. You see something on sale and you convince yourself that you want it. And that's a good purchase. Sure, you're happy for a couple of days, weeks, whatever the case is, but... After that, you're probably not going to use it. Scary, right? It's like I'm reading your mind. Right through your headphones. Don't worry, don't take them off. Hopefully you haven't taken them off yet. Because I'm not psychic. I just have experienced instant gratification. And know that affects pretty well. We all know virtual reality, augmented reality. <laughs> it's the newest and coolest phase that we're experiencing technology in. Back when... It was a new thing for virtual reality. I bought the headset for my Note 5. And guess what? It was amazing. I watched Netflix hands-free, went on roller coasters, did this, did that. But guess what? After using it for a month, I never touched it again. It sat there and collected dust. So I gave it to my sister when she took my old phone from me. And that's the problem. Sing gratification. It's great for that one or two little moments, but after that, it's not there. But, guys, some things might feel, you might think, are instant gratification, but they aren't. Like success, we know about the success of iceberg. And I'm about to touch on it again, but let me go over it in the story from my past. I remember when I was first able to bench press 315 pounds. Can't do that now. Right now, probably 210 on a good day. But 315 pounds, it was amazing. To this day, I could clearly remember it like it happened yesterday. And that's a fact. I remember what I was wearing, how tired I was, who was there. Never seen any of those people after that day, but I remember it. It was almost 10 years ago, but yet I still remember it. How is that? A small insignificant day because after that I didn't try and match out again. But the reason why it's still in my memory is because of delayed gratification. Before I go into more details with this story, let me define what delayed gratification is. According to, like I said, the first thing that pops up on Google, we know how that is. Delayed gratification is the ability to put off. Something mildly fun or pleasurable now in order to gain something that is more fun, pleasurable, or rewarding later. So let's dive back into this bench press story. On that day, I had no intention to try mats out on the bench press. Before that, I hadn't tried my one rep mats for like two years. But I just went to the gym and I was doing my normal workout routines. I was literally exhausted from doing squats. Well, I had 25 pound dumbbells on each hand and I did about four or five sets of 50 for squats. I was exhausted. Mind you, this is before my motorcycle accident. I was exhausted that day. And I saw a couple guys going for the one rep mat and they had 315 on the bench. And after my workout, I'm like, yo, let me give that a shot. That's why I did it because they were doing it. And I saw one guy doing it and I'm like, you know what? Let me try and see if I could do it. And, wait, 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 Josh, that sounds like instant gratification. You did something just so you can compete with someone else. You went to 
be in the spotlight for that moment. That's only half the truth. The real truth is the only reason I was able to lift 350 pounds, 15 pounds on the bench was not because of that person. It was because of the hundreds upon hundreds of hours I put in weightlifting and at the gym. I sacrificed a lot back then. My workouts, I worked on the morning and at night at home or in the gym. Hour to two hours each workout to exhaustion. I would fall asleep sometime with the weights on my neck. Because I was so exhausted, I couldn't lift it up anymore. Take a 10, 15 minute power nap and then rack them up. But you don't see that. Because it's the success iceberg. You just see the end result, which is me lifting up 315 to compete with another guy in the gym. 315 pounds, I'll tell you, is heavy. I weigh that right now. <laughs> And it's so much pressure that the only way you're doing it is if you have support and you have the strength. Because even with the support alone, you're not doing that. So that's the late gratification. That's why I remember it because of all the hours I put in working out that I remember me falling asleep with a 165 to 210 at home because I was maxing out at home doing four sets of four or five sets of eight, whatever sets I did. Because, guys, my workout back then was intense. My warm-up was the bar 45 pounds, four sets of 50. So that's why I can remember certain milestones in weightlifting because of the work I put in. Okay? And guess what? The topic of delayed gratification being greater than instant gratification works in anything in life. Take investing. I invest with the same principles of delayed gratification as I'm talking about with my working out. I used to invest to make money short term because that was what everybody was doing. Day trading, this and that. And I don't do it anymore. Not because I want to just avoid paying higher taxes, which is crazy. 38, 40% if I sell it under a year. <laughs> Capital gain tax all the way, but no. The reason I'm changed is because of what I've experienced, okay? In my first year of training, I was trying to buy low, sell high. That's what everybody says to do, which is easy on paper, but it's impossible to do in actuality. We don't know the market. The market's so random at times. But throughout my training in that first year, I sold stocks, I should have kept and bought stocks that I should never have touched in the first place because I know nothing about it. So why did I make a lot of mistakes? <laughs> I went to a rather software named Wall Street Bets. I saw one kid turn a thousand dollars into like fifty thousand in a month by showing the market all this stuff. I also saw some people lose a lot of money. I'm like, no, you know what? Let me be smart. Let me listen to these guys who sound like they know a lot. So one of the bad things I did was there was a shooting a couple of years ago. Like today, as of recording this podcast, there was a, just a shooting. Flood in my heart goes out to everybody injured or wounded. It's the same thing. Or injured or deceased and their families. Ash Wednesday for all those Catholics out there and for something happening like this. It's a topic for another thing, but listen. So there was a shooting, and I'm like, they're like, you know what's going to happen? People are going to buy guns to defend themselves. I'm like, yeah, that's actually good thinking. Yes. So the stocks are going to go. Before the stocks go, let me get in <laughs> and buy these stocks low. Well, I didn't buy the stocks low because those stocks never went up. They went down. So I lost some money there. And Brexit, we all remember Brexit, right? They as it, they as it, oh my God, end of the world. The economy's going to crap. Let's buy gold. I bought gold. I lost money in gold because the dollar still wins at the end of the day because nobody uses the gold standard. And I'm like, you know what? Let me stop buying based on people. So I go, hmm, AMD. This rather thread is telling me, hey, AMD's done. This is it. They hit the mark. I can't believe it's going this high. Nine dollars. Whew. AMD, you'd be lucky to get six in a couple months. So I'm like, wow, it was nine dollars. Now it's eight. Let me sell. 
Hey, I made a decent profit because I bought all my shares under three dollars. I even bought some under two dollars. <laughs> Guess what? I had a gut feeling. I'm like, but AMD's coming back. They're gonna release new processors. Since before Threadripper, before Ryzen, all that. I'm like, AMD's still doing things. They're in the video game consoles. Still going with my gut. I went with these Reddit users. You know, they must know something. I don't know. Yeah, well, as of right now, recording this episode, the stocks are over twelve dollars, twelve dollars and fifty cents a share. <laughs> I lost four dollars a share, and I have a pretty decent amount of shares. Hey, you win some, you lose some. But after that, I said, never again. After this Reddit thread, and I'm not gonna listen to anybody's. That's my advice, other than people I know that <laughs> are. Amazing at it, like Warren Buffett. I don't personally know him, but I read his books, watch him, TED Talks, and any of his talks on YouTube. So I'm like, let me just invest in dividend stocks. My friends are like, oh, why are you investing in these stocks? They're not even going 5 10% a week or a month. You're not going to make no money. Heck, I don't even think some of these stocks even move 2% a year. Because I'm not going for short-term gains. I'm going for long terms. And with these stocks, I know I'm receiving money no matter what. Because I get stocks that pay out dividends, and they have a track record of paying the dividends. <laughs> so, what's the average rate of return for a savings account? Mine is 0.01% on my personal savings account. I think a bond I have is like 1.03%. Seeing some banks... Off of 0.03% intra, intra, introductory, right? But guess what? One of my stocks pays back six cents a share a month. Doesn't sound like a lot. Except the stock is only like $7 a share. So the six cents at the end of the year is paying back 12% of the stock's value. I have other stocks that pay back 13%, 9%, 10%. Doesn't sound like a lot. But when... I'm getting 0.01% interest. I'm making a penny on the grand every month with Chase. Every grand that I have, I have a penny back. So for those who don't know what grand is, it's a thousand dollars. I make back one cent. With this stock, I'm making back six cents on like seven dollars. <laughs> exactly. Mind you, you gotta pay tax on your know, interest from the bank. So that's the power of delayed gratification. You work hard. And that's why you remember the moments of triumph. You invest money for long term. That's how you get more back. You don't eat out every day. You make your special moment once a month and you take that money. You pay your bills. You invest. You save. Maybe you save all that money away for that house or that apartment you want to buy. Why? Because nobody wants to just keep eating out and living paycheck to paycheck. I launched that business. Talk about the topic of business. Let's get into this one, right? <laughs> Good segue, I know. I consider myself an artist. I went over this. I'm an artist. I create content. I'm an artist. I'm not a traditional artist. I don't paint. I'm not a music artist. But I'm an artist. Okay? And the life of an artist is straight, strictly delayed gratification. Look at Picasso. Look at Biggie. Look at Pac. Most artists get bigger after their death. It's sad, but true. Take all the content I'm currently producing to the different forms of media that we use. Okay. This podcast episode took a little close. It, I was going to say a little hour. No, it took about two hours worth of writing. That's just to write this up. That I'm going off script anyway. <laughs> but... Then I have to record. Right now the time is at 14 minutes and 23 seconds. And I'm still going. So let's say this took 20 minutes. Then I have to edit the audio. I wish I could take the raw audio. I wish I was that good. But no, I have to edit the audio. From there I have to upload it. And create a small mini post so I can upload to all the podcast platforms. And I also have to make it into a video for those who watch on Facebook or YouTube. But... So let's just say it's about three to four hours work. Each blog 
post I do is about two or three hours of work. A video could take a whole day. I've said this many times. And do you know how much I make from blogging, YouTube, or podcasting? You hear that sign? Because that's how much I make. Nothing. And all this time and effort I've put into this doesn't include the time I spend writing actual books and reading and coming up with topics and trying to think of new ideas to bring to the community. I'm making a dime, but guess what? I could put ads on the site and with the amount of traffic I see, I could probably make a couple dollars, two or three here and there, you know? But I didn't start this podcast on my site or the YouTube videos to sell my advice. I started to sell my books. That's why it's called Books by Josh. Could say Life with Josh. Adventures of Josh and Josh. <laughs> Something, you know? Not the greatest topics. I'm going off script, but that's the whole thing. I'm giving this advice for free because I'm not licensed to charge for money for money advice. I'm not financial advisor. <laughs> but other than that, for any of my advice, because I like talking. I like to help people out. That's why, I like, Evan Carmichael's your one word. Mine's joy. I like bringing joy to people. But that's known me for over 10 years, we'll tell you. Josh likes to talk, and he likes to give advice. But that's the whole thing. If you see still using the advice I give, that's wonderful. But I don't expect to get paid for it right now. I'm nobody. I'm Josh <laughs> from Books by Josh. Maybe in a couple of years after I've been grinding hard enough, maybe then I'll take a small little sponsorship here or there. But now I'm just happy if you guys leave me a comment to let me know how I'm doing. So another reason I decided to do this topic today, right, as a podcast rather than the blog topic, because I could easily worry about this today. Been done a little bit earlier. It's because of the feedback I received for last week's episode. It wasn't, that episode honestly wasn't that great. The topic was decent, number one. It's a clickbait topic. So that episode, let me just give you some small little perspective. The writer for that was 100. Okay, this writer for this week's episode is 150% longer than last week's. Now, including me going off topic, which I did a lot more this week. But this episode, I'm back to being me. I tried that clickbait thing. Nah, I'm done with it. This week, I spoke from the heart <laughs> and told stories from the past. Or well, human. And if I could get results with this delayed gratification. I want you guys to try too. Because if I could succeed in anything, weightlifting, you can too. When I started weightlifting back then, I could barely lift up the bar. Just heard I was able to bench 315. It took me about four and a half years, but I did it. So that pretty much wraps up this week's episode of the books by Joshua. If you feel if you liked it, feel free to subscribe to the podcast. If you want more content. YouTube.com, search Books by Josh. Visit us online, booksbyjosh.com. Or, I mean, booksbyjosh.com. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at Books by Josh, Facebook, Books by Josh. Or, if you wish to support us, feel free to become a patron on patreon.com slash Books by Josh. You want a copy of my book? Bye bye. You can go on Amazon and get an ebook. You could get a physical copy on Amazon also, on Barnes and Noble. Or, if you want my John Hancock on your book, at booksbyjosh.com. But, guys, like I said, if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to my YouTube channel also. Let's grow it so I can start working on some more content for there. I've been holding off because I don't know if you guys are ready for it. Let me know. Anyway, guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.